Anchor rolled some of the biggest names in streaming into a pint-sized projector called the Nebula Capsule 2. It's powered with Android TV software and Google Assistant. In this video, I'm going to show you how the Capsule 2 stacks up as a portable projector and as an entertainment system that you might want to consider over buying a smart TV. Even if you already own a Nebula Capsule 2, you'll want to watch this video because I'm going to show you a few unique streaming features that no one else is talking about right now. This video is a follow-up to my written review that you can find at my website, cordcuttingreport.com. The Capsule 2 is about the size of a pint glass. It projects an impressive 720p picture resolution and comes with a remarkably handy remote control and more than 3,600 apps from the Google Play Store. You'll recognize the projector's menu if you own a NVIDIA Shield or Smart TV with Android TV software. With apps like Hulu, Pluto TV, and Netflix, the Capsule 2 is an easy pick for a movie night. You can even watch live sports with YouTube TV or PlayStation View. Add an HD home run or a Tableau tuner to the mix, and you can watch over-the-air channels using a TV antenna. For gaming, I paired an inexpensive Matricom gamepad to the Capsule 2 to play Badland, Beach Buggy Racing, and Riptide GP Renegade. Last summer, I spent about a month testing out the Nebula Mars 2, I still think it's among the best portable projectors on the market. The one limitation was its third-party software. The software's performance wasn't very good, so I plugged in a Roku streaming stick to broaden the app selection, and the Mars 2 was almost perfect. Anchor came back months later with the Nebula Capsule 2, and adding Android TV was a monumental improvement. It essentially turned the Capsule 2 into a portable TV and streaming device rolled into one. I mean, you could take this anywhere, or even just your backyard, and you don't need anything else. No streaming device, no extra speakers. It's really a full package and very portable. The Capsule 2 comes with a USB-C cord and an adapter for charging, and a remote control equipped with Google Assistant for a huge variety of voice commands. The autofocus and keystone correction work well. There were a couple instances where I had to engage the autofocus manually, but the keystone correction is quick and it's responsive and works very well. The Capsule 2 has 200 ANSI lumens, which makes it watchable in dim light, but this projector is really made for nighttime viewing or at dusk. The two 8-watt speakers added some nice dimension to the audio for its size. And if you want to just stream some music, the projector works well as a Bluetooth speaker. I watch mostly everything at 100 inches, which Nebula says is the maximum screen size. But I found depending on the angle or setup that you're using, I was able to go over 100 inches while maintaining a very good picture resolution. The only workarounds you need to know about is with Netflix. Anchor says that due to Netflix's policies, the company only certifies devices with at least 1 million units in production. Anchor addresses this lack of Netflix on the main menu by sideloading the app through its mobile app. Just look for the N at the top of the Nebula mobile app and then tap up the icon. Once you have Netflix on the screen, you can go back to using the regular remote control or the rem mobile app to navigate around. Speaking of remotes, having the Google assistance on this projector is no small thing. When I first read that Google Assistant was a feature on the Nebula Capsule 2, I was skeptical. What am I going to use this for? You can do some of the things you expect from Google Assistant, such as asking for a weather forecast or when the next Red Sox game is on. It's also an easy way to hunt down shows or movies without having to dig through a number of apps. When I asked Google Assistant to see thriller movies, I was given choices from Google Play and Voodoo, as you'd expect. But I was pleasantly surprised to see the software also pulled in the movies saved to my Plex account. Chromecast is pretty useful for sharing photos and videos from your PC or smartphone. But honestly, the Android TV software had more than enough options for movies and TV shows. I'm glad to have Chromecast on this projector, but only as a backup option. At the back of the projector, the Capsule 2 has a single HDMI port and USB port. Having these ports means you don't have to rely on an internet connection to watch a movie or look at some family photos saved to a hard drive. There are thousands of apps on Android TV thanks to the Google Play Store, but during my testing, I was drawn to many of the same choices that I have for my TV. Let me show you how I set up the Capsule 2 so I can quickly pull up a movie or TV show that I want to watch. Pluto TV is a pretty good one to have. The free streaming service has a robust lineup of free movies and more than 100 live channels. 
It's an easy way to quickly find a movie or find some live music, but going into each and every app can sometimes be a pain. So here's a better way to get to movies from Pluto TV, subscriptions like HBO Now, and even live TV from Philo. Go to the bottom of the screen, you'll find the customize channel button. You're really gonna wanna use this so you can set up your projector. That way, when you turn it on, you'll be able to see things like free movies from Pluto, and even subscription services like HBO Now right on your home screen. I subscribe to Philo, which has 58 live channels like a &E, HGTV, and Paramount Network. You can watch Philo just through its app, but here's where the coolness factor of the Android TV software kicks in. Let's say there's a few channels that I watch a lot. I go to Customize Channels and select those channels and pull them into my main menu. Now I have a live feed of any channel I want from my Philo subscription, whether it's AMC, a &E, or whatever. The channel icon takes me to the live stream, and to the right I have a whole bunch of popular shows from that network. The Capsule 2 doesn't support this for every streaming service, but it's a very handy option. For live TV, YouTube TV was impressive, especially when I watched a Red Sox game outside. As you can see, the picture remained bright and crisp. I connected to the 2.4 GHZ bandwidth on my router while live streaming on YouTube TV. Since I use a TV antenna quite a bit, I tried out an HD home run tuner and a Tableau OTA DVR. No matter which you use, it's pretty cool being able to watch free over the air channels on a big 100 inch screen. Scrolling through my favorite apps, you'll see FX Now, HBO Now, free services like Tubi. Even without Wi-Fi, the Nebula Capsule 2 can play downloaded games from the Google Play Store, and you can stream movies from an external hard drive. I only downloaded a few basic games to the projector, Badland, Beach Buggy Racing, and Riptide GP Renegade. The projector has 4.4 gigabits of internal storage, 8 gigabits ROM, and a quad-core A53 processor, so it's good enough for smooth, casual gaming. Anchor says the HDMI port can be used to connect DVD players, game consoles, and streaming devices. ES File Explorer was already loaded on the projector, so I plugged in an external hard drive to the USB port, and my movies played seamlessly. The saved files on a hard drive can be viewed under the local folder. The Nebula Capsule 2 retails for about $580, which isn't cheap, but considering that you're getting a 100-inch screen, a full suite of apps from the actual version of Android TV, it might be a better deal than a smart TV if you want something portable. If there's one thing that makes the Nebula Capsule 2 stand out in the world of portable projectors, even more expensive home theater projectors, it's definitely having Android TV. It's not some projector with an operating system that's designed for a mobile device. It's true Android TV software, and that's pretty huge. So projector makers, take note. If you really want to compete in 2019, and even in the next few years, you should seriously consider adding Android TV or something just as good for software. So what do you think of the Nebula Capsule 2? Leave a comment below, and be sure to like this video, or subscribe to my channel. For more details about the Capsule 2, head over to my website, cordcuttingreport.com. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.